The Saints are on a break until late July when training camp rolls around, but the biggest story is Alvin Kamara's contract situation. Sean, is there a middle ground that these two sides can reach? I would hope so, just given where each side currently is with you know, the Saints, a new offense, new offensive coordinator. Who do you have at running back behind Alvin Kamara that can give you what he gives you? Despite the fact this is a run first offense and a lot of running backs have had success, can they give you what Alvin Kamara could potentially get you? Alvin Kamara is a guy who's going to be 29 years old in a couple of weeks, so he doesn't have quite uh, the leverage power that he would have if he were, say, 25 or 26 years old. But if you really look at the numbers and you really look at the contract and you really look at where everyone stands, this boils down to 2025, not 2024, 2025. How much are the Saints willing to guarantee Alvin Kamara? in 2025. Right now he's got a $22.5 billion uh, base salary on the books, unguaranteed. How much of that would you be willing to guarantee? Obviously, Kamara is going to want as much as possible guaranteed for next season. The Saints are going to try to keep it somewhat, you know, in the middle there. So if they can hopefully come to that number and get a decent guarantee figure that both sides are happy with for 2025 to where the risk is mitigated on both sides, but both sides are still happy. Hopefully that's the direction they can go because right now he's under contract. If they don't get anything done, then it can become a pretty difficult situation if Kamara holds out and then if it gets into the regular season, is that a problem as well? It, it could get to a point where it doesn't necessarily need to be given where both sides are at currently this year. So find a middle ground, find a number, and then move on. Absolutely. And look, after training camp or after mini camp, uh, there are some injury concerns that the Saints are also worried about. Are there any position groups that you feel like they need to add some free agents there to kind of boost some depth. Yeah, there's there's a few positions that have gotten thin. The, the thinnest uh, is obviously at the tight end position. When you talk yeah. about Juwan Johnson's injury, a lot of vague vagueness, if that's a word, uh, around that injury. When it happened, how long he's going to be out? We know he had the surgery. Does that linger into training camp? Does that linger into the preseason, into the regular season? We don't necessarily know. So just for the sake of having enough players to do reps, there's a lot of reps you're talking about when you talk about training camp, in pads, a lot of practices. If you only have a couple of tight ends, you have to add someone to that mix just to, for reps. But also this, I mean, behind Jawan Johnson, you got Foster Murrow, who's a guy that certainly has a, 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 a spot within this offense, what he can uh, do, but that it's a different skill set. I like the undrafted rookie, Dallin Holker. I'm pretty confident he's going to have a spot on this roster, but he is still an undrafted rookie. So to me, I think you get to look uh, whether that's a you know, free agent market, uh, who knows, could be cut over the last over the next couple of weeks and months. We have to kind of wait and see. But I do think that tight end room is a, is a position to really watch. And also, people have been talking about the wide receiver room quite a bit. I do think that's something to monitor. Right now, they have numbers, but they're very young. It's a new offense. How do they adapt? How do they adjust? Is that a position they could target potentially? And also this position. Defensive tackle could be a little thin right now when you talk about you got Brzee, Shepard, Saunders. Behind them, you have a rookie in Christian Boyd. You have Kendall Vickers, which is a veteran. Is that enough there at that position where maybe you may have to target someone to bring in for training camp? And speaking of training camp, it's all about the position battles that will play out over in Irvine, Irvine California. You kind of highlighted a few competitions there. Which will be the most competitive, though? During training camp. I think the, the one that's going to get the most attention is going to be the backup quarterback yeah. battle between Jay Kaner and Spencer Rattler. A, it's the position. B, a couple of guys that they drafted. Spencer Rattler is a, is a well-known guy, played a lot of college football. Hainer is a guy that came on a lot last year during training camp and had a very good offseason. I do think those guys are going to duke it out. So I think that's going to be the one that's probably talked about the most, and it's probably going to be the one that's the most exciting. But I think the most important is going to come – at the left guard position. Who settles in at left guard? We saw Nick Saldivari get the majority of the reps in the offseason at that position. Hopefully that's a sign of things to come, but the pads still have to come on. It is a new system. Could Lucas Patrick at some point slide over? Uh, Ali Udo is another guy that they brought in. Didn't get much offseason work, but is he a guy? Those are two veterans. So I think that position is critically important for the entirety of the Saints offensive line because they have to get their best five. So who ultimately settles in at the left guard position is going to be an interesting competition as well. All right, we got about a month till training camp. Is there any storyline from mini camp, just in, from the offseason in general, that maybe isn't being talked about enough that'll have a huge impact during training camp during the season? Uh, fans need to watch out, pay attention, because I'm telling you, the first time you see the new kickoff, you are going to shake your what did I just see? <laughs> I mean, we got a chance to watch it at practice, yeah. and even. I read about it. I saw the graphics about it. But when you like watch it up close, that is something because of the where the uh, the uh, I guess the the kickoff team and the return team have to line up five yards apart. You can't move until the ball is uh, received. And there's a lot of guys in a, in a short space. I think you're going to see 
quite a bit of returns, kickoff returns for touchdowns, something that's been pretty non-existent in the NFL over the last few years, given all the touchbacks. So I think the new kickoff rule is flown under the radar, but it's going to have a much bigger impact than people realize this season. Yeah, and obviously, like you said, we saw the Saints kind of practicing yeah. that uh, with it being very different for this upcoming season. So, of course, they'll continue to do that during training camp over in California. Sean, thank you so much. Thank you.